The Indus Civilization, also called the Indus Saraswati Civilization, is the oldest civilization of India. No one knows where and when this civilization started. Where earlier Mahargar was considered to be the most ancient site of the Indus Civilization, carbon dating has proved that the Indus Civilization site of Pirna, in the Indian state of Haryana, is about 1,000 to 1,500 years older than Mahargar. The Indus Civilization was active in the Indian subcontinent from 8,000 BC to 1,500 BC. Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, two big cities of this ancient civilization of India, unfortunately fell victim to the partition of 1947 and went to the part now called Pakistan. In this first video of ours on the Indus Civilization, we will focus on Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. The sources of the video are given in the description. Hope you enjoy the video and learn something about the prehistoric history of India. The Indus Valley Civilization One of its key cities was Mohenjo-Daro. The story of the discovery of Mohenjo-Daro is an interesting one. Although the British Indian government was familiar with this area of Sindh, it did not consider it archaeologically important enough to be excavated. The British were primarily hunting for prehistoric sites in India, and therefore did not want to waste their time excavating a 2,000-year-old site. The place had a huge mound, which looked like a Buddhist stupa located above a Buddhist monastery. Some coins of the Kushan Empire were found near that mound, which ruled that part from the 2nd century BC to the 3rd century AD. In 1922, Rakhal Das Banerjee, an officer of the Archaeological Survey of India, was granted permission to briefly excavate around the mound at Mohenjo-Daro, Rakhal Das did not expect to find anything from prehistoric times there. His goal was to expose that stupa-like structure. But as soon as he started digging, he found some seals similar to the ones that had already been found at Harappa in Punjab. To Rakhal Das, it became clear that Mohenjo-Daro was also a prehistoric site connected to Harappa. As he dug more, a prehistoric, large, and well-planned city was exposed. Harappa is situated at a distance of about 680 kilometers from Mohenjo-Daro. The story of the discovery of Harappa is a little different. In 1856, British officials in India were busy building a railway connecting the cities of Lahore and Karachi along the Indus River Valley. Some of the laborers working among them found several burnt bricks in a nearby dry area. The number of these bricks was in hundreds of thousands. The laborers used some of them to build the roadbed unaware that they were using ancient artifacts. Seeing the bricks, the British officials understood this is the site of an ancient civilization. Later, Sir Alexander Cunningham, who was an engineer by profession in the British Army, but interested in history and archaeology, visited Harappa in 1872 and found some seals which he handed over to the British Museum. Sir Alexander Cunningham also wrote about these seals in his annual report of 1875. In 1906, Sir John Marshall saw these seals in the British Museum and made up his mind to excavate Harappa in detail when he goes to India. In 1921, when Marshall was the chief of the Archaeological Survey of India, Rai Bahadur Daya Ram Sani started excavating Harappa at his behest. The cities of the Indus civilization were designed according to a grid structure and town planning principles. Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa were surrounded by massive walls and gateways. These may have been built to control trade, military invasions, and to protect the city from floods. Each city was divided into two parts. In one part, there was a high fort where the rulers lived. In another part of the city lived the governed and the poor. Each part of the city was made of a boundary wall. Each section of each part contained various buildings such as public buildings, homes, markets, art and craft workshops, etc. The roads were made at right angles. Baked bricks were used in the construction of houses. The drainage system was one of the most remarkable features of the Indus cities. All the surrounding roads and streets had drains. The drains were mostly covered and hidden underground. The road drains were made of burnt bricks with specially shaped bricks for making corners. The bricks were laid finely and sealed with a mud layer.
The drains of the houses were connected to the wide public drain built along the main roads. The drains had holes at regular intervals which were used for cleaning and inspection. Small drains were drained into private drains and bigger drains into even bigger drains. Vast sewers carried the city's wastewater outside, where it was disposed of in cesspits or in various types of ponds. The Great Bath is the most impressive structure discovered at Mohenjo-daro. It is made entirely of burnt bricks. The length of this amazing bath is 12 meters, width 7 meters, and depth 2.5 meters. The floor and walls of the pool were waterproofed with gypsum and bitumen. At that time, there was no such structure anywhere in the world. Where we have the Great Bath at Mohenjo-daro, there is the Great Granary at Harappa. The building of the granary is measured 55 meters by 45 meters. It is made up of two sections, and both the sections are connected by a tunnel. Each section has six storage rooms which are 15 meters long and 6 meters wide. There are air ducts under the wooden floor which may have been for ventilation. But most scholars agree that there is little evidence for the construction of large-scale granaries at Mohenjo-daro and Harappa and that these structures should be viewed only as large public buildings. Excavations of Indus cities have yielded many evidences of artistic activity. The popular art of the Indus civilization was in the form of terracotta figurines. Most of them are females, often laden with ornaments, but males, some with beards and some with horns, are also present. The art of pottery making was at its zenith in the Harappan culture. The Indus potter was a skilled craftsman who produced plain, colored, and glazed pottery. There is also a small but notable display of bronze sculptures, including fragments and complete examples of dancing girls, miniature chariots, carts, and animals. The most famous artifacts of the Indus civilization is its seals. Most of the seals show a single horn, or a hornless unicorn or bull, an Indian humped bull, an elephant, a bison, a tiger, and gods and goddesses of those times. The residents of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa were basically farmers. A research conducted by the Department of Archaeology of the University of Cambridge in 2016 confirmed that the farmers of the Indus civilization were the first people to use multi-cropping strategies in both seasons. They grew rice, millet, and beans during the summer and wheat, barley, and pulses in the winter, which have separate irrigation requirements. A network of farmers then took their produce to the markets of all the ancient cities. The Indus civilization was an agricultural society, but trade was equally important. For this, they used bullock carts and boats. The Indus people may have been the first to use wheeled transport in the form of bullock carts. Such bullock carts are still seen in South Asia. They also constructed boats and kayaks. The Indus civilization city of Lothal has been identified as a coastal city where boats and kayaks were docked. Traders of the Indus civilization sailed long distances on bodies of water such as the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea, and the Persian Gulf. Trade centered on the import of raw materials used in the workshops of the cities including minerals from Iran and Afghanistan, lead and copper from other parts of India, jade from China, and cedarwood was floated down the rivers from the Himalayas and Kashmir. 
Other trade items included terracotta ware, gold, silver, metal, flint for making coarse tools, shiny stones, conch shells, and colored gems such as lapis lazuli and turquoise, which were brought from abroad or from other parts of India. There was an extensive maritime trade network between the civilization of Harappa and Mesopotamia. Harappan seals and jewelry have been found at archaeological sites in areas of Mesopotamia that include parts of modern Iraq, Kuwait, and Syria. The religion of the Indus people was the ancestor, or at least one of the ancestors of today's Hindu religion. No site has been found at Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa that can undoubtedly be classified as a place of worship. But this does not mean that there was no such place. The people of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa worshipped what archaeologists and historians have called the Mother Goddess. It is only the Hindu religion in which Shakti, the female cosmic energy, and her various forms are still worshipped in India. Like the Mother Goddess, there was also a male god who is believed to be an early prototype of the Hindu god Shiva. Several lingam structures excavated from Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa represent the Shiv Ling, and the yoni rings on which they are mounted represent Shakti, the female cosmic energy. There is a seal called the Pashupati seal found at Mohenjo-Daro, which is widely accepted as one of the earliest representations of Lord Shiva. Scholars also believe that the three horns of this deity later evolved into the trident of Shiva. Apart from this, the bull and the people tree was considered sacred by the Indus people, just like by today's Hindus. Seals depicting swastikas have also been found at Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. As no evidence of the Vedic religion was found at Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, historians and archaeologists concluded that the Vedic religion probably came from outside India and later merged with the Indus religion to create the Hindu religion that we see in India today. But this was before the discovery and excavation of Indus civilization sites in India. New evidence casts a shadow of doubt on the theory. We will discuss this in a separate video. Within the Indus Valley civilization, there were three ways of disposing of the bodies of the deceased. One complete burial, two complete cremation, and three partial burial, in which only the bones of the deceased were buried in a burial jar or directly in the ground. Sometimes bones of more than one person were found in a burial jar. The most common form of disposing of the dead was post-cremation burial. Post-cremation burial pots belonging to all phases of the civilization have been found buried under streets and buildings of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. By 1931, only 21 skeletons were found at Mohenjo-Daro. Most of them appear to have been victims of some sort of accident, who were buried at those sites after the end of the Indus civilization. In contrast, about 90 skeletons were found at Harappa, of which only 19 were complete. In a cemetery called R-37, some skeletons were in wooden coffins. Most of the skeletons were accompanied by gold and semi-precious stones, pottery, conch shell bangles, and steatite beads. This suggests that these individuals buried in the cemetery represented an upper class of the city. At least 126 large post-cremation burial pots have been found at Harappa, containing small vases, bones of small four-legged animals, birds or fish, shell bangles, beads and terracotta figurines mixed with ash and charcoal. Only one of the 126 had some human bones. From this it was inferred that after cremation, the human bones were either 1. dispersed into a river and the remaining ashes buried with the pot, 2. After cremation, there were no bones left, therefore only ashes were buried. Or three, human bones were probably crushed and mixed with the ashes. And post-cremation burial pot usually contained ash, traces of charcoal, 
terracotta figurines of animals, men or women, dog, goat, or ram bones, shell bangles, steatite beads, and pieces of jewelry.